Good morning, everyone. This is Swapna. Welcome to the machine learning class. Today, our topic is asset drops. One type of artificial neural network system is based on a unit called perceptron. Here shown figure is about the perceptron. The perceptron takes a vector of real valued inputs and calculates linear combination of all these inputs and then outputs 1 naught minus 1. If it is more than the some threshold value, then it gives output as 1. Otherwise, it will use output as minus 1. This is the simple representation of perceptron, which is the basic unit of the artificial neural network. So, here, whatever the inputs are shown, more precisely, given inputs are x1 to xn. The outputs are output of x1 to xn, computed by the perceptron. How it is computing means that this input is well, already we said if it gives the output 1 if it is the more than some threshold value and if it is less than some threshold value it will give output as minus 1. Uh, what is the threshold value and how we are calculating means here output is we said linear combination of inputs. This one is studied in while we designing a learning problem. With, uh, we said target function is a linear combination of inputs with the sum weights. That one only here we are specified. So these are with the linear combination of inputs with the sum weights. The first one is we can call as the additive constant and W naught. Remaining all weights, weights are constant. Uh, weights here W1 to Wn. And these are multiplied with input. Multiplied with input x1 to xn. Uh, if it is the value is more than some this threshold value, and then we can uh, output say is 1, otherwise minus 1. Here, very easy. Each w i is the real value constant only, or we can say weight. It determines the contribution of input to the perceptron output. It determines what is the contribution of input to get the perceptron output. And quantity w naught is said, it is a threshold value. What is the value of x at w w naught that is additive constant that is the threshold value now weights combined of inputs remaining all w1 now x1 to uh, w and x n must surface in order to the perceptron to get the output one the simple notation we imagine an additional constant input is x naught is equal to zero generally in figure c uh, this one, it will uh, start from x1 to xn with the, all our uh, inputs are having with the weights from w1 to wn, but only the bias are we can say external input we can consider, first fixed input is there, but here x0 value is fixed that one, whatever the w0 value that or only we can consider as a threshold, whatever the weight is given to that one, so that is, Additional constant input is going to say though that allowing us to write the above limit qualities in the form of this one. Generally, i is equal to 0 to n, wi xi is greater than 0. Or in vector form, how we are representing this like this w xi. When we turn into x and vector that is greater than 0, then we will get the 1. Uh, we will sometimes write also perceptron function like this also. Output of this, output of all the inputs vector is equal to sine of sign of weights vector into the input vector whereas sign we can say output weight vector as it is equal to y and when we will get the one if y is greater than zero otherwise sign of sign of y we are getting sign of y is equal to one when we are getting y is greater than the zero otherwise we will get the minus y so this is once again basic unit of the artificial neural network basic unit of the artificial neural network here it is shown and uh, what are the terms are there what is the linear combination of output that we are also studying next we are continuing with this uh, topic once again continuation learning a perceptron involves choosing the values for weights 
how we are getting the outputs and how it is going to learning learning function concept on it. Once again, we are specified uh, which are covered in the uh, designing a learning program only. Choosing the values for W0 to WN depending upon that only learning a person on involves and uh, hypothesis means is represented with the capital H. This is the candidate hypothesis considered in the perceptron learning, which is set of all possible real value, which is the set of all possible real value weight vectors, and it is represented like this H is equal to vector of W by W, vector belongs to the hypothesis space. And the relational power of perceptrons. What is the relational power of perceptrons means? Here, the perceptron is representing a hyperplane, hyperplane iteration surface in n dimensional space. If we are using x and y dimension, only the two dimensional one, it represents that perceptron can represent with the hyperplane also with the n dimensions, not only the one or two with the n dimensions. Perceptron outputs one, for instance, is lying in one side and of the hyperplane and outputs minus one for the instances lying on the other side. Here, graphical representation with the uh, hyperplane with the n dimensional space means whatever the uh, instances will give the output perceptron as one means uh, represented one side and uh, what are the instances which will give output minus one that are lying on the other side and the hyperplane once again is represented like this vectors of w and x is equal to 0 the equation of this ratio is like this of course some set of positive and negative check naming examples cannot be separated by hyperplane those can all can be separated we are separating all the training examples as uh, giving the output 1 and a minus 1 and it's uh, specifying that positive training examples and negative training examples which are separable that we can call as a linearly separable set of examples and some we cannot uh, separate that one if we can uh, there is a possibility of differentiating that one but we cannot separate so we cannot separate with one side and other side next uh, there are two types. Uh, there are two types of uh, uh, perceptron: single layer perceptron and multi layer perceptron. Uh, single layer perceptron. Already we uh, know that uh, whatever the inputs are coming to the neurons, that is in the form of one layer, and what we are getting the outputs. Uh, output for every layer and uh, for which we are going to view that we can call as the output layer neurons. If it is containing only the output layer other than uh, other than the input layer, then we can call it is only the single layer perceptron. And multi layer perceptron means it contains the input layer. Whenever whenever generally whenever giving name to the any network with the layer the layer representation then if we are not considering the source node layer that is input layer that is input layer depending upon the uh, other than input layers depending upon that name is given other than input layer if there is only the one layer output layer and which contains the computational uh, nodes or neurons then we can call it as a single layer perceptron if it is more than that then we can call as a multi-layer perceptron here i gave the picture in representation of single layer perceptron and multi-layer perceptron single layer perceptron is this one and here it is having the input layer neurons the source nodes and output neurons only it is containing one that's why we are calling this one is the single layer and the remaining is it contains the output neurons as well as the some other layer is there which will contain the hidden neurons we, uh, which neurons we can call as a hidden neurons and which layer we can call as a hidden layer means it is in between the input layer and output layer the layer which is input uh, between the input layer and output layer and the neurons which are in between these layers we can call as a hidden neurons and a complete network or complete perceptron we can call as a multi-layer perceptron multi-layer perceptron so this is the example or representation of single layer perceptron and multi-layer perceptron Next, once again, going to learn about the perceptron only. I am doing the one second in uh, this one now. Uh, perceptron sector only. Here it is the input uh, nodes, input neurons. 
this is a linear combination of wave you can take in the linear combination of these input layers and if it is a more than that some threshold value then it will give some step uh, it will give output like a step function step function uh, it is a more than that some threshold value one otherwise minus one like this one minus one and single perceptron can be used to represent the many boolean functions already you know maybe the some boolean functions and to represent the vector will be in values. Boolean values we already know that is 1, not 0, or true or false. Uh, by setting the weights uh, for this uh, input signals, the per perceptrons may perform the some Boolean functions. We are taking only the two inputs, two inputs or three inputs to represent the to, to the function of Boolean layers. Generally, Boolean uh, functions are uh, or function and function like that, XR function uh, like that. In fact, and R are weaved as a special cases of M of N functions. Um, that uh, these type of uh, functions which will be performed by the perceptron is represented with the notation of M of N. M means number of inputs and N means number of uh, outputs what we are getting. So there is a function where it will use the m of uh, m of the n inputs uh, uh, to the perceptron must be true. The R function corresponds to R n uh, is equal to n. The n function corresponds to m is equal to n. You can know uh, any of the m of n function is easily represented using perceptron by setting all the input weights with the same value. Same value is shown. <laughs> Perceptron can represent the all the primitive Boolean functions and or NAND and NOT. Unfortunately, some Boolean functions cannot be represented with a single perceptron such as XR. To represent the XR function, we cannot represent with a single perceptron. We can go for the multiple. And the ability of perceptrons to represent the AND, OR, NAND and NOR is important because every Boolean function can be represented with a, some network only interconnected units. Uh, ability of the representing these functions of the perceptron is very important. Every Boolean function is represented with a, some network only. Here see that Uh, we are getting the output as some positive for a training examples positive, <coughs> some training examples negative. Here see uh, positives are represented with the plus and negatives are represented with the minus. All the pluses, all the pluses are one side and all the minus are one side. That means these type of examples we can call as a linearly separable. And some some training examples here they are differentiating it is a positive and it is a negative. But we cannot uh, draw a line in between these two as separating as a positive and negative. These we can call as a non-separable examples. These, where here I am writing, I am drawing one line in between the positives and negatives. These type of training examples we can call as a linearly separable. And here I am giving one artificial neural network which will represent the R truth table. That is which will represent the Boolean function of R. See, here I am giving the sum weight for W0 is minus 10. Minus 10. And uh, inputs are W2 and W3. That means X1 input and X2 input. Uh, 20 and 20. That means these are the positives. That way here we get considered Boolean within the form of Boolean value means 1 and 1. Form of Boolean value means 1 and 1. What we need to get output of depending upon the R truth table is 1 only. 1 only. So, this is the R truth table. Uh, whenever both inputs are negative, or both inputs are uh, Boolean value function 0, then only we will get the output. Otherwise, whatever may be the if at least if at least one input is a positive, one input is Boolean value function 1. Then we will get the output of 1. For this, it is the representation. Maybe the W2 value is positive, and here W2 value is also some. Need to training example, and its value is 
representing with the zero, then also we will get the output or function. Any one of the input, any one of the input is having the boolean value function one or two, then we will get the output true. Like this, all the boolean functions, all the boolean functions are represented with the network, with the input signals and whatever the function. Whatever the process or function it is there, it is different. It is done through the computational node, and we will get the output. And we said previously with this slide, and or and and or and nor functions are we can represent it with a single percept, and only the XOR function we cannot represent it with a uh, single percept. This is the example for the single percept. This is the example for the single percept. Uh, so today we covered this uh, about the basic information and uh, some little bit uh, information about the perceptron, how perceptron looks and what is the basic unit of artificial neural network is perceptron and what are the notations for the inputs and outputs, how we are getting the output that is also we covered today and uh, how hypothesis is represented. Uh, with the wave vectors that is also completed and uh, with the vector type of representation also we covered and uh, these are the um, pictorial representation for uh, single layered perceptron multi-layered perceptron and this is one more time we specified as a perceptron can represent the boolean functions within that and or um, NAND functions we can represent with the single uh, perceptron, but uh, XR we cannot represent with the single perceptron. And here we shown linearly separable examples, and which are not linearly separable examples also. And this is the one uh, Boolean function uh, which is represented with the network that is uh, truth Boolean, uh, sorry, R Boolean function, R Boolean function, and this is the truth table for. R billion function. By this topic, I am concluding his class. Thank you.